Usually we hear the music moaning. Good. Okay. <laughs> we might be on. You, you are hear. live. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Oh my God, I didn't hear the music. Tony, how come we don't hear the music anymore? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll sing it next time. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I mean, usually we're all sitting here, we're chatting, waiting for the music to come on, and it's like, you're on live, oh shit! Hi everybody, <laughs> welcome to Between the Sheets. We're on the first and third Friday of every month, except for this month because it was on the holiday. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, Between the Sheets podcast on Facebook. Please follow us there. Um, call in tonight. Tonight, it's a free-for-all. There's no guests. I mean, I would call Vicki Wagner a guest and Durga McGroom a guest, but not really. They were part of the second incarnation, so it's all home week. Um, and uh, bring them in because, you know, we want it to be a shit show tonight. Welcome. Um, Between the Sheets has always been a roller coaster ride of um, insanity, uh, potty mouth girls, and we're going to bring it to you sort of... I, I think tonight is going to be probably... What originally I had in mind, um, not not really moving away from controversy, just taking it on. So we do want you to call in Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter. But I will tell you the rules. Be kind. Be kind. No, don't no slamming. Nothing. We want your opinion. We're all educated. So please give us an educated opinion. And we don't have to agree with you and you don't have to agree with us. But I really would appreciate some sort of decorum when discussing when you have the floor. That's I'll follow all that. the rules I'm going to ask. <laughs> we don't have to follow those rules, but as a caller, you do. So um, <laughs> so let's go around the room. We have Tony working the keyboard tonight. Thank you, Tony. Happy Thank New you. Year. Hey. We have Cara Noble in the Hello. house. Woo -hoo. We have <laughs> Valerie Milano from the Hollywood Times in the house. Hey. We have Cheryl Murphy, our hey, on-site sort of groundedness in the yeah, show. Yeah. And I thought it was really important that she's here tonight because of what we're going to discuss. Then all the way from Rome, but she's been here a while, is Jerga McBroom. <laughs> yes, and I'm in all Hollywood right now. Yeah, right, exactly. And then um, we have, as, as I said, another veteran of the Between the Sheets podcast show, um, Second Incarnation, Vicki Wagner. And you're in up north right now, right? Is that yeah. where you live? Yeah, Sacramento. Sacramento. So um, I just want to start off, even though I didn't hear the song, you guys heard the song. Um, it was um, a friend of mine um, and a friend of Cara's, we know her, um, Terry Nunn. Um, and I know that she got extreme backlash now for playing at mar lago for New Year's Eve. Oh, let yeah. me give you the number, 323-524-2599. Now, um, a lot of people were very upset because she played there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were upset, especially the LGBT plus community, because she played there. So it was a no win for Terry to play there. That's good. Oh. Now, what I, I guess, you know, I did call her. I didn't speak to her, but I called and left her a message that thinking, you know, she would probably want to talk about it. But, you know, I called to give her my support because as an artist in any field of artistry, it shouldn't be about politics. It really shouldn't. Um, music is universal. And especially in a time when, you know, artists aren't making money, you know, it's a job. So I don't fault her for doing it. Need some um, cash. Yeah. I mean, if, look, if I was her publicist, to be honest, if I was her publicist or still her manager, you know, what, how I would have dealt with it is I would have sort of fed it out to my fan base, letting them know, you know, in advance, sort of to curtail the backlash. So people would know in advance, but for whatever reason, their team chose not to. And again, I, I don't know the reasons and I'm not gonna fault them. They chose the, the, what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. But I felt very badly for her for, even though she did, she did do an apology by the way, um, but- a shame. She doesn't I did, have to apologize. Exactly. She, she, she didn't, didn't apology, but she didn't have to. Right. And and then, you know, and a lot of people like in her band, when the backlash hit, were saying, you know, I wasn't there, I wasn't there, I wasn't there. So, you know, I think I wanted to open the discussion for you guys, what you think and, and what your feelings about it. And I don't think Terry's a turncoat. I don't think she, you know, I know her personally. She has always been a supporter of the LGBT plus community. And just because you take a gig 
in you know mar lago and it's all republicans and they're not going to be masked you know what hey look we take that chance every day walking around town you know we're masked she was masked obviously you're performing you cannot be masked but you know she was there doing a job and she was being paid to do a job and to have politics and all this stuff come into play I think that was very wrong for people to come down so But Gan, let me interrupt you because it's, you know, you're kind of giving her a pass because you know her and everything. And I'm not against her, but every other artist has been judged for the exact same thing over the years, whether they played at Bill Clinton's inauguration or whether um, artists were telling Donald Trump not to use their music anymore. It's a pretty well-known thing that if you go perform for somebody that the, the fans are gonna get pissed off because they believe they own your entity. So while Terry did need the money, I, I agree that with that because like you said, during COVID, you know, people who are in the music business or anybody who, you know, depends on ticket sales, they had slim pickings. So, I mean, I, I get that, but you can't give her a pass just because, you know, of that, you know, she has a huge gay fan base. She's performed at LA Gay Pride several times, as you know. And um, so they, the fans, I think, feel like they also were there for her. And I think that they feel she let them down. Can I differently? Performer, I am a performer. Right. You couldn't pay me enough money to set foot in that hellhole. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. And the fact that she has been so um, supportive of the LGBTQ community, and then to go and perform for some elitist party for someone who has actively been working to remove rights from my LGBTQ friends Thank is you. outrageous. And I mean, I'm not going to say how I know, but I know it wasn't some like wildly, hugely paying gig more than some other one. Um, more than anything, it was a vacation at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, right. And to, to threaten to screw up your career behind that kind of misstep was just ill thought out. Right, irresponsible. Wow, we see, I don't see it like she did it for the money. I don't think she did. She um, didn't. She's not a political person anyway. Um, but when I read it on Facebook and I could see people getting angry, I immediately didn't feel that way at all. Even though, I mean, the world's gone mad. So what difference does it make? And I'll tell you how I see it. <laughs> a big deal of difference to the no, people. No, it doesn't, because let me finish, right. let me finish, because She's had a year of not being able to perform. You must be dying because you're not performing. And I just think, well, she went to a crazy party. She can tell stories for the rest of her life. That, well, you can't say that. She went to Donald Trump's house. house. She, she mm -hmm. went to Mar-a-Lago, yeah. But good for her. I mean, we're all stuck at home. She got to go to Mar-a-Lago and talk about it and sing and perform and made some people happy. But she knew what she was doing, though. When she yeah. stepped foot, when she accepted the contract to Mar-a-Lago, she knew what she was doing. She knew what she was getting into. Actions have consequences. So she can't do something and then say, oh, I'm sorry, I did it. You know, you do have mm -hmm. that. I mean, remember, look what happened to the Dixie Chicks when they didn't right. like George Bush. I mean, they they rolled over their, look at Sinead O'Connor, what they did to Sinead O'Connor when she did the thing with the Pope. They they took a bulldozer and they rolled over her, her CDs. So even in, Durga can attest, in the music industry, they know they have those consequences. So you, you have to know that you're taking that step, that you're actually, hey, these may be the fallout and you got to be okay with that. You know, you have to weigh that all out. Let me, let me know when she's going to say that. Else. None of us let do. Something else. In terms of, first of all, to say that music, musicians shouldn't be political. Are you kidding me? You ever heard of Rage Against the Machine? You ever right. heard of Roger Waters? It's not about that. that. It's sort of about that, you know, I think, I understand there, every, look, everybody is somewhat political, okay? Whether you're an activist, you know, or you're under a rock, unless you're under a rock, everybody's political. But it would be like, to some degree, you know, I mean, I worked with an actor a long time ago, and I'm gay. I don't look gay. I don't act gay. I don't wear the flag. I, I, I'm gay. I'm and gay too. What does gay look like? <laughs> exactly. So the but the publicist who knew I was gay pulled me I'm aside. Married. I'm and married. Said, but the publicist, his publicist, pulled me aside and said to me, "Please don't let him know you're gay. He likes you. So I don't want him to have any. He was a Republican, of course. Any aspersions or anything against you because of your sexual orientation. So wow. you know, it is 
out there. I mean, things like this are out there and we know the concept. I mean, you know, if I really gave a shit, I could go there and say, you know what, such and such, I'm a big fucking lesbian, too fucking bad, you know? You gotta work with me anyway, whether you like it or not. But, you know, you choose, I chose not to do that because I needed a working relationship with someone. So, I, I mean- that. I, was, I wasn't finished. I was gonna mention something about this. What you just said, you actually had the choice to not say anything. Mm -hmm. Some people don't really have that choice. And for her to take that gig is really indicative of her privilege because she could. Mm -hmm. I mean, would I ever accept a gig with a man who uh, used to clear the floor in Atlantic City of all the black employees because he didn't want to see them? Hell no. But I can't walk into a room and pretend, oh, I'm not black. Or didn't I rent out houses to them, Durga. Remember the apartments in New York? Remember him and his yep. father didn't rent out to black people in the oh, 80s? Yes. Come on. Ooh, of course. Wow. It's, I, I'm sorry. I have a thing about privilege. And it was unbelievably privileged of her to accept that gig. That's just how I look at it. And I am a performer. I am struggling. And, I mean, if he was offering me, like, $2 million, I'd think <laughs> about it. But... <laughs> He wasn't. He wasn't no two million dollar gig, and to potentially throw away my career for a stupid party and a few days at a resort in Florida with the devil. No, he <laughs> and their supporters. Well, he wasn't, wasn't there. He was not there. The supporters. He was supposed to be. Oh, he yeah, just, he didn't was. know he had yeah. a. His supporters are just exactly like him. Let me tell you, when Kim and I went to the March, Women's March on Washington in 2017, I had originally bought my tickets because I thought Hillary Clinton was going to be inaugurated. So I already bought my plane tickets and all that. We end up staying right next to the Ritz Carlton. And so the <laughs> night before, we're like, oh, let's just go over to the Ritz Carlton and have dessert, right? A friend of ours lived in New York and met us there. Every single person in the room was a Trump supporter. They had all just come from his $150,000 a plate dinner the night before the inauguration. We were the only Democrats there. There was three of us. They were some of the wealthiest people in the nation. And when you talk about that they say that us, the middle class and lower class are belligerent, the people at the table next to us were making comments, oh, why don't you go get an abortion? You know, like they were saying about, talk, not to us, but they right. were referencing the people who were there for the Women's March on Washington. And we're like staying super silent. They were so, they were talking about black people. They were talking about gay people. They were talking about abortion people. They were talking about us lazy liberals that want a handout. And they all came back from the, um, the dinner with their pictures on their cell phone with them and Donald Trump. All of them had a Tiffany bag that was about, I don't know if you could see me, like that big, the biggest Tiffany bag you can ever imagine full of all their stuff that they had just got. Every single one lady was decked in her biggest fur. She could have the most, I probably had like millions of dollars of diamond rings. They were so belligerent. And then they had the balls to talk about us being belligerent. If you guys would have heard how they were talking about us, all of us on this podcast would have been talked about because we're not the 1%. Right. They can give a shit less about any of you. So for yeah. what you're saying, you know, they, they hate us. They literally hate us. Yeah. They yeah. hear less about us. And you know what? I'm sorry, but I think Terry Nunn taking that gig was a bad move on her part. And, you know, apologies. That's lip service. Give me a she had to. apology. She had to at that point because gay Twitter dragged her. Mm -hmm. it dragged mm -hmm. her. And rightly so. I could never look any of my gay friends in the face. Thank and you. I'm sorry integrity matters to me Thank integrity you. matters and i will not prostitute myself for a paycheck to somebody who would just as soon own me literally you know what i'm saying because he yep. would if he could bring back slavery boom they all would he, yep that's all right well you make some beautiful points there i have to it has it has to be mm -hmm. said I, I really understand both of your points of view it's just that like right now the world's gone mad how can we judge? We shouldn't judge. We should just let Terry do Terry and we'll do us. And there it is. Oh, no, because that's how the world <laughs> got mad was because people were like, oh, well, I'm just going to look the other way. And, you know, they're talking about this and they're, they're, you know, that's how Nazi Germany happened. People looking the other way. Well, that's yeah. what's going on right look now. The other way is how Germany happened, is how Hitler happened, is how Trump happened, because people look the other way. Because right. Oh, he grabbed your pussy. Oh well. Do it. 
<laughs> Sorry, this pisses me off. What if he off. grabbed your pussy? Would you would you mind then? I mean, no, I, I can't believe the man even got elected because of either. Don't, don't put me in the Trump camp. That's not. I just, I, I'm just. We're gonna segue now. But first of all, I just, I, I, I've come to the point where I'm my mother now. I just want <laughs> everyone to know what I bought on Amazon. Oh wait a minute! You changed the subject. What about Sharon? She got something to say. Well, I'm getting there, but I just was okay. looking at me in the thing going. I think I, I know. Look at my glasses. mother. I just because I can't, because recently I've been losing my glasses. <laughs> and I, I'm like, where are my glasses? <laughs> where are my They're right on my eyes. <laughs> um, but today it came in Amazon. My little bejeweled stuff. I'm like, okay, I have no shame. I kind of like it. Thanks. Like you're bringing so, a trend back. I'm trying, trying. You're bringing, you're bringing my grandma back. I you're know it. You know, 50, it just back. turned 57 a week ago, so hey. I'm I'm sort of settling in. Happy birthday! Thank you, you. thank you, thank you. Yes, happy um, birthday. thank you and thank you. So Val, you're pretty quiet. Yeah, you know, I think you know with this whole Terry Nunn thing, and you know, Vanilla Ice was there, and and the Beach Boys, oh. Mike Love. You know, um, we're picking on Terry a little bit. Yeah. But um, what did she th think would happen in the end? You know, what uh, when she went in and took the job, she knew she was going to have some backlash. Um, and that's what I just don't get is that you're going to go back and now you're going to apologize. What were you doing before when you were doing your planning to fly there? And I think she was apologizing that. not because she did it. I don't maybe wrong, but I think she was apologizing because she said she thought everyone was going to be masked. Because that's some of the other issues. It's that's not even worse. She did. You're right. That's because even what worse. I, I mean, what I heard was that she was told that um, that when she got there, she was surprised that no one was wearing a mask. And oh, that they how could you be surprised? Turn on any channel and watch a Trump rally. Exactly. Round. None of them yeah. are wearing masks ever. <laughs> Never. Look, she didn't tell me this. This is what I had heard. So it seems like she took the gig, like Durgis said, without thinking of the back end of it, you know, thinking what was going to the backlash. Like she took it as an artist in some way thinking that, you know, maybe this isn't a very artistic, creative thing to do. But the backlash, you know, she's got to somehow make up for it. You know, she somehow has to reach out to her fans. And maybe that's what this is going to happen for her. Maybe in some way uh, it's going to, you know, shift her view or her perspective about where her fan base where they are faithful but she to did her, think you know? about it because i'm a stand-up comedian and i've performed all over this country and i've thought about bookings wow. and have been, i have been asked to perform at republican events and i have declined mm. just for that reason just like what durga said the backlash you're gonna get it's not worth it mm. it's really not you know so you gotta just make a choice you know i mean think about some of the people who gave their their they were just using their their music at rallies and they sued them and said don't use our music anymore that's true yeah. which is great <laughs> well i mean i just brought valen because valen, val owns the hollywood times and, and she's you know an entertainment reporter and that's her beat and i mean one of the tweets or was it tweets facebook i don't remember something i saw from someone from the lgbt community said um elemental xyz plus negative <laughs> um, is that um she, meanwhile it's part of me but uh, is that you know the money that she made from this she should donate to an lgbt cause and you know I, again i i i don't know why she did it i don't i'm not of course i don't know um but i do one thing i do agree with all of you is that when she took the gig she had to have some, her and her people had to have some indication that in fact, there would be backlash just because of who it is. Right. So in other news, <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, call in 323-524-2599, 323-524-2599. Um, yeah. yeah, so where do we start? Twitter. Um, you know, where do we the start? Witch, witch I, mean, is dead. I mean, he's the witch is dead. Yeah. Twitter, 
They blocked. They finally blocked him. I mean, blocked him. I think they canceled his account. I don't know. I was actually but, on his Twitter page giving him, telling him off when they canceled it, and my whole page changed to the white screen. It said this account is uh, suspended. And I was like, what? Because I was just telling him he was an asshole because he was like, I'm not going to the inauguration. I'm like, nobody fucking wants you there. Who right. cares? Right. Right. Do you think Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want you at their inauguration? You know, no, it's like. No. He, no, just get on a plane and leave the country. Don't come back. But the funny part is, is um, um, it's really astounding to me. And I've always said this, that he's been allowed from the very moment he took office to do what he did on social media. Bizarre. Carte blanche. He, he did anything. And the only yes. reason he's being, you know, who's, you know, dumbass, all these dumbasses are resigning and stuff like that. And, and Twitter stopped them now. And, because nobody wants to be on the sinking ship because it's burning as it's going down. True, true. And it's like, you know what? This could, I mean, not that you could have stopped asshole, but you could have stopped fueling the fire by him, allowing him at the very beginning not to have that. If it was... If Joe Biden goes on Twitter tomorrow and does anything of what Trump did, he'd be crucified and calling people losers and sad. Remember, he used to always do hashtag sad. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Sad. 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 You know? Yeah, do you imagine? Do you think Joe imagine? Biden will get a will go on Twitter? He but will probably he not will use it as much Obama because had done yeah. that. He did. He did. And I think he'll, Biden will have to. Well, and he's, he's already on, you know, he's already on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, he, but, you know, it's, but you know, his tweets people. are like curated tweets. It's like his staff right. helps him write. It's not off the yeah. cuff. Like Donald Trump, just whatever. He's just sitting there like, oh my God, here's what I thought. And the minute it came out of his head, he tweeted it, you know? <laughs> he, he had no regard of what yeah. he said. I was like, I can't believe he said, like what you just said, Gan. How the hell did what, did we allow a president to even talk to us this way? Right, right, yeah. you know, they said if it wasn't for Twitter, he wouldn't even have gotten elected to begin that, with. I heard that. Exactly. Yeah. That's how he amassed all his followers you know well, yeah i mean he's like it's his, i mean his twitter page should have been sociopaths anonymous yeah you know? I mean, <laughs> it is trust me there's plenty yeah. of sociopaths and there's a lot of people that go on there and they tweet and then you look at their profile and they've got like 10 followers yeah. and i'm like did you just create this twitter account just so you could tweet that you know <laughs> Or How about the one guy, Durgo? You might know about that. Remember the one guy he was tweeting as a black guy, as a black yes. gay guy? Yeah. Do you guys remember that? He had his alternate no. Twitter account and forgot to switch over, and he was pretending yep. to be a black gay man who loved Donald Trump. And, and he, he has a cartoon was... picture of the black guy. Do you remember that? Yeah. He's like Cartwright, you know? Yeah. He's... Yeah. I, oh I must admit it's worrying that 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 things can be banned so easily now, so readily. We've 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 just accepted that. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, there's no free expectation no. that just because you 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 have an account that you can say whatever you want. I got banned on Facebook for like over almost 150 days last year. What did you do, naughty? Yeah, you know what I said? I said that I knew some dumb gay people as a lesbian. I said I they said that was hate speech, and then I said that Ooh. all Christians are sinners. And that was hate speech. Oh no! I didn't call anybody a you know a, a yeah. loser, fucking moron, whatever he says. I didn't say any of that. I said I'm on I, a day ban right now because I was writing something to a friend of mine who was talking about burn it down, and he was all happy about what happened at the Capitol. And he's always getting on me about stuff, and so I was going to tease him back and say, "Well, why weren't you there yourself, letting everybody do the work for you, you pussy?" And then I got a little warning saying you may be violating community standards. I went to try to edit it. I tried to edit it twice. And I thought, oh, well, maybe it's just not, you know, I need to just refresh the page. Nope. 30 days. And then you were banned? Oh, yep. that's terrible. I don't even get warnings. I got banned once from Facebook. And wow. it was about, I think I called, I called Mitch McConnell. So I didn't call him anything nasty. I just said something about not white privilege, but it was something in that vein. It wasn't even a really horrible derogatory cuss word, which I'm known to do. Um, but it was just saying that this guy is a lunatic, but in very nice wording, but putting my point across, 
I got banned. I got a censorship. We can't allow it. We, we're giving in. Okay, none of us want to hear from Trump again. But again, censorship. It's happening so much now. In this but country. wait a minute. They should have censored him a long time ago. That's oh, a long time ago. allowed to incite a riot where people, insurrectionists, swarmed the Capitol because mm. of his instructions and his goading. There and it's is been going on for weeks. This... For censorship. And I mean, we all, look, we all yeah. knew the guy was not going to leave, like, obviously. Yeah, yeah we knew And that. we, you know, we were, I mean, I was sitting waiting, waiting to see what he was going to pull out of his ass before we left. And look what he did. And, you know, the guy is, I mean, certifiably. Lit a match and burned it down. Yep. Insane. Yeah. Well, am I the only one that, am I the only one that thinks that when he even first got elected, that he's on social media and he's on Twitter all the time? That was just so odd for a president. Yes. Very odd. Terrible. Very odd. Terrible. Just Very odd. I mean, we went from the most eloquent president that we've ever had of all time to the most bottom of the barrel guy. And like what you were just saying, <laughs> I know. You know, how is this man talking to people in this manner? And we're okay with that. Like, I like to think I'm an, I'm an Air Force veteran. I was in the military, so I'm a true patriot. And like most of the Republicans who want to claim they're patriots and never got off their couch with their mortal combat, that's what they think. But I, I like to think my president is a commander in chief. So when you're in the military, the president is literally the commander in chief. And when you have to think about the chain of command and the respect that is given, even to give somebody a rank just above you, you expect them to be a lot more moral, like, oh, they're, they should be moral. So to have a president of the United States who's the, you know, the top of the chain of command, the commander in chief, for him to be behaving like that, I, I'm astounded that this country allowed him to be that person. And the people who voted for him are who is responsible. Yes. And the thing is, I mean, when Hillary, you know, I, I mean, I'm not saying Hillary, yes, Hillary, no, but Hillary got crucified for those fucking emails. Yes, she did. Yeah. Still. For those fucking emails that, that no one read about. It was those that she was using a like, personal account for email. You know what? Okay, fine. Illegal. They crucified her for that. And yet this jerk gets on Twitter and, you know, and, and, and look, Obama was on Twitter. Michelle was on Twitter. But they and other presidents that, that had Twitter or Facebook accounts. But, you know, they were leaders. Right. You know, they they put things out eloquently. Right. They were. They had team. decorum. It's about decorum. It's about bringing people together. And he utilized the social media tool to divide yeah. a nation even further. It's then like he, he was, was running the country from Twitter. You know, he was running he the was. country from his Twitter he account. He was. You know, triggering people, just triggering emotions. And Dude that's was he sitting on the toilet at three in the morning, <laughs> gacked off his face, <laughs> tweeting about furiously, I know what Coke's view looks like. I'm a musician. So he <laughs> like, sends out 15, 20 tweets at 3.05 a.m. <laughs> what do you think he's doing? It's like ah the weird so, thing I mean, is I never I never followed Donald Trump. I did. I didn't want to follow I him. did. I never but followed him. For some bizarre reason, he came he came up anyway. <laughs> He's there anyway. It's like if they didn't if if you just chose just not to, they were gonna ram him down your throat, Cara. Yeah. But Kara, oh. even if you didn't follow, okay, I followed him because I wanted to know what is this man saying? <laughs> like everybody should have been knowing what is this guy saying on a daily basis? If, if you would have followed him or seen his tweets, and I guarantee you didn't see that many because sometimes he would tweet a hundred times a day. I mean, what? No. 100, one day they counted, they, they like it was in nine hours. He tweeted like 145 times in eight hours. I'm like, that's, are you supposed to be running a country over here? You know, like, <laughs> what are you doing that you're just tweet, 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 tweet? Isn't that Insane. the sign of a tweaker? Just saying. Yeah, um, was a, tw <laughs> I just, a tweaker. It should be called, you know, instead of uh, Twitter, it should go tweaker. You know, yeah. tweaker. Tweaker. Um, but the reality is, is, you know, this guy, uh, I never, I never, and I'm, not, I'm sure none of us here, I've ever referred to him as president because he's not my president. I, I, I'm embarrassed, as all of us are, that he represented this country. But what is more, I guess what was, 
more scary for me, and I know that's not like an intellectual word, was the amount, because he breeded such an open forum for hate and for um, discrimination. He exposed it, Gan. It was there. He exposed it. But he said it was okay. See, that's the thing. You can expose something, okay? But he not only exposed what was the underbelly of the, uh, the dark underbelly of this country, but he not only exposed it, he jo- he told them, go and go out and do what you need to do. Right. He encouraged, he encouraged that. Dangerous. That is That is what he did. He endangered his own fucking country to pit people against each other. Oh, wait a minute. Did you guys ever, did you guys read Michael Cohen's book? Have no, any, no. No. Okay, yeah. I, oh my God. So you guys really should, okay, I'm going to tell you, just if you, no, if you want to buy it, go to the library, whatever, order it from the library. You can, let me tell you, in Michael Cohen's book, he, he, you know, because Donald Trump threw him under the bus, right? So he was in prison. He wrote the whole book from prison. He decided to throw Donald Trump back under the bus the same way Donald threw him under the bus. He tells all kinds of shit. He, like what you're going to what you're just saying by enabling these people and encouraging them. He hired a black actor to pretend he was uh, Barack Obama, had him dress up in a suit just so he could berate him and yell at him. And the wow. he had to pretend he was Barack Obama, like a black skinny guy that looked like Barack. Wow. And then he, he, yes, he did. This is the man who is your president. Yes, yeah. that's the like, shit he did. Yeah. You guys all heard it. I mean, I mean, this is the hey. kind of thing he did. He got off on it. He loved yeah. putting people down and in their place. Do they call someone like are they is this would he be referred to as a sadist? He's, He's a, a sociopath. sociopath. That's well, what that, that we know. He's a sociopath. Malignant narcissist, probably. That too. <laughs> He's a narcissist. He's a sociopath. He's probably bipolar. Who knows? He's frustrated because he can't get off anymore, you know? So, yeah. yeah, well, the Adderall. But you exactly. know what else? You know what else? You know the weird way he kind of stands, like in that stance with his butt, fat butt sticking out, and he <laughs> yeah. kind of leans a little bit forward? There is a doctor who has put up, a, you can look for it, you can Google it. He exhibits all the symptoms of frontotemporal dementia. Oh, and no. that, that posture is textbook typical of frontotemporal oh. dementia. So, mm. and his father, I didn't know this until recently, his father had Alzheimer's so bad, dementia, Alzheimer's, I don't know what the distinction is exactly, that they first figured it out when he was coming down the stairs, go, get ready to go to work, and he had six ties on. Okay. Ooh, so, <laughs> so they took daddy and they were like, okay, dad, uh, you're, yeah, like, you're going to go to work. And they would like send him to this room where he thought he was going to work every day. Oh. And he wasn't. He yeah. wasn't working. And he would just sit in there and write on papers and act like he was doing oh. stuff. And oh, the guy was out of his freaking mind. And so, you know, and if you look at the, the <laughs> progression from just even 10 years ago of how Trump used to talk, he could put together whole sentences yeah. and wasn't exactly eloquent. But he was coherent. And you compare his speech patterns to 10 years ago to now, you can tell his brain is mush. The guy's been snorting Adderall since I don't know how long. Been, but, but I'm just curious, you know, after the Capitol riots, um, you know, now we've got the, the the powers that be here in Los Angeles, like Adam Schiff. He's he wants him to be impeached. And then we got Eric Garcetti that wants him to basically resign. Do y'all have an opinion on that? And like, what is really the difference? I mean, is uh, it, I don't think already? he's going to do any of it. Okay, I think it would be better if he was impeached because if he gets impeached, number one, he's going to never be able to run for office again for life. Number two, he loses all Secret Service protection and so does his family, which costs us lots of money. He also le- loses his $1 million a year travel allowance that he gets. So I think it's better if they just hurry up and impeach him. They're going to decide on Monday, and I hope they do it because the House is going to be unanimous on that. Right yeah. when we were getting ready to come on air, I was watching MSNBC, and apparently in his last pretty <laughs> pause on the majority leader post, McConnell has said, Mitch McConnell has said that if the House impeaches him on Monday, which they probably will because they have the votes for it, right. he will 
not put it to a vote to the Senate to actually remove him until the 19th. What? Yeah. I don't feel Which that. Is just like, I mean, the yeah. reason that we need expediency here is because we don't, it, I mean, they're already putting up stuff about the million something March on the 20th on inauguration day. The 17th, they're planning something too on the 17th. Yeah. 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 What were you going to say? Eyes open. Uh, Eyes open on that on the seventeenth. Is this coming 20th, from the other side? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't really see him getting impeached. I don't know. I mean, you know, whether whether I'm right or wrong, it's like I just don't. I don't see it it happening. And and so I I kind of like what Durga said about you know McConnell waiting. That makes sense for me. That's like that's how it's going to play out. And the thing about the Capitol that and being. Um, approach that capital that that whole scenario was staged it seemed or you know it was pre-planned, right well i mean we can oh. agree that it was pre-planned let's just say yeah. that yeah. right we can agree that that's what i mean it was pre-planned it was i mean how they got to that window to break that window open it's as if we let them do that like someone just <laughs> says that's the window you want to go in <laughs> well, you know, the, the mayor of washington dc he called for the national guard the week prior the day before they denied her the National Guard. It's the Department of Defense is who is in charge of the National Guard. And it also has to be Donald Trump saying, yeah, go ahead. So they denied her the National Guard. There was a guy, he came out on Periscope. I don't know his name. You guys can look it up. It was on the news tonight. He said that him and three congressmen were planning something big at the Capitol and you're gonna see it. So you're right. There was some planning with Republican congressmen. This guy, they knew what was going to happen. For weeks, they've been saying, come to the Capitol, come to the Capitol. I mean, all the death threats that they were getting online and social media and everything like that. And then also with the Capitol Police just standing there like, what are they doing? And they're like, oh, they overtook us. And like you said, they, they got to it. They're climbing over the walls. They storm the Capitol. They get in. The one cop takes a selfie with one of the, the rioters. I mean, what the fuck? I was at a gay, <laughs> no. a, a gay rights protest in Los Angeles in 2008 for Prop 8 so that we could get, I don't know if you guys remember, in Prop 8, gay people got the right to marry. Then all of a sudden, they started taken away three months later. Yeah. So I was at a peaceful protest. The riot police were out in such full force with full riot for gay people. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> what was some gay gonna, gay gonna sprinkle fairy dust over them or something like that? I mean, how, how bad is it when you gotta have your riot gear about against a gay people, you know? Right. So, and what's even worse is apparently on the on the uh, Capitol Police force, there are 2,000 Capitol policemen uh, right currently on the force. They had 500 on duty. Right. 500. If you look on my Facebook page uh, for my New Year's post, I said, if you live in D.C., I would evacuate between January 5th and January 7th. I knew what was going down. Wh what kind of policemen are these? But I'll tell you something else. They apparently, some of the people that broke in had maps, knew exactly where to go, because it's not easy to find some of those offices, to find Pelosi's office. They were directed there. It was an inside job. And then you see the pictures of the guy with the zip ties. Yes, exactly. 11 Molotov cocktails, two pipe bombs, yeah, right. uh, uh, an automatic rifle. I mean, they. this was a setup from yeah. the inside. And so what did it? was going to gonna happen, they were going to kidnap and hold the legislators hostage, start killing people until they changed the vote and made... That's what their plan was, 100%. Durga, 100%. Well, here's my question for you guys. I mean, I read somewhere, I mean, I'm reading like a little bit in pieces everywhere, but that the the some of the people that were petitioning or advocating that the recalls and the recounts, that they should lose their seat. What do you feel yep. about that? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Personally, I, I think that, you know, one of you ladies had mentioned the right to free speech. Yes, you have the right to free speech. However, when it is to the detriment of your entire country, where you're telling so many lies repeatedly to get the people up in a frenzy, it's like cult nation. 
It's like these were cult leaders on the nation. And then you had somebody like Ted Cruz, who just four years ago was talking about how dangerous Donald Trump was, yes. that he should not be allowed as the president, that he will incite violence. They showed the tweets tonight on CNN. I took pictures of it. That, you know, he was denouncing, Te you know, Donald Trump. Then he comes out as one of his most ardent supporters and said, we love Donald Trump. God bless Donald Trump. This is, you know, ruining democracy. And you're stirring up a frenzy. Like you said, you cannot, you have free speech, but you can't yell fire in a theater. That's that is right. what he was doing. Ted Cruz did it. Holly did it. The other people did it. You know, the other six senators did it. They were stirring everybody up into a frenzy. So when that guy, Simon and Schuster, you know, said, we're not going to publish your book, just like you're talking about Terry Nunn earlier oh, with the consequences of your action. Now, Simon and Schuster is not going to even publish his book now. They're like, no, we're not going to publish it. It so, makes me wonder then, why would he have done it? I mean, it hasn't worked in his favor if it was him. So who did send in the rioters? Because I'm, I'm sure they the all clowns. Kind of They different. all did. <laughs> Donald Trump did it. Mike Pence did it. Ted Cruz did it. They, they you know, you, they, you, you know QAnon, right? I mean... <laughs> I think the they, they, they all supported this, but Pence got upset because th then he started hearing that the supporters were gonna gonna lynch him That's outside, right. and they, they were, were gonna kill him up what? on the grounds of the Capitol. They, they said they're gonna, gonna hang him from a tree out there and hang him. Yep. But let me put it to you like this: if very you're in, a, in a house and you got a bunch of people, and you got one guy who's like, "We got to keep everybody inside because if they go outside, they'll find out that they have freedom." We got to keep them in here. We got to make up some reason. And this guy stands up and goes, there are lions and tigers outside. You can't go outside. You got to stay in here with me and let me take care of you. And all of his buddies and his sycophants and all of that are like, yeah, he's right. There's lions and tigers outside. And they know there's no lions and tigers outside. And the more gullible amongst the people in the building freak out, grab their guns, and start shooting out the windows, killing people outside. Who's responsible for that? everybody who went along with the lie that's right true so the thing is there is that one woman that died that i know died. it's you yeah. know she died but you know what she posted on her facebook page and her husband confirmed she was a diehard trump supporter who was also a QAnon conspiracy theorist that believed that and said that they needed to take back their country and they were happy to go out dying for their cause. Just like the guy who had his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Mm -hmm. He said, if we have to go out with blood, it won't be my blood on my body, but I'm going to die with other people's blood because I'm going to kill them first. I mean, this is their mindset. Their mindset was to go in. How about the lady who was maced? And they said, well, why did you do it? And she said, we're storming the Capitol to take back democracy. <laughs> Although, wait. I saw a picture of her. It looked like she had an onion in a rag that she'd wiped on her face to make it look like she'd been maced, and she wasn't actually maced. <laughs> I don't know. I, I saw just I saw um some on on uh, uh, YouTube. I saw the footage of the policemen actually opening the barriers and letting the people in. Yep. What the what and what the fuck was that? Because they were in on it. A lot of the policemen flashed their badges. There was a lot of off-duty policemen. Remember I said 2,000 people on the force, only 500 were on duty. A lot of off-duty policemen showed up in plain clothes, in their own clothes, flashed their badges, and got access into the building for some of these people. And that woman who died, you know what she was doing when she got shot? No, what? They put up furniture as a barricade so that they could evacuate the congressmen and senators. There was one exit left they could get out of. I saw somebody who was saying today, they could see them bashing on the glass trying to get in. And they had piled up this, this furniture. And when they finally broke through the glass, she was one of the ones trying to break through to get She to was those in the window people. climbing through when they shot her. Yes, that's right. Yes. You know, I mean, if somebody was climbing through my window right now to try to get in and kill me and I had a gun, I would shoot that person. That's the I right. Have a gun. I'll shoot your ass. Yeah. And the lady that I just bought a gun. Well, you just and bought I'm, I'm going to just switch um, really quick, just, just to give this woman kudos. And I'm going to mention her name, Stacey Abrams. Of course. Yes, big time. I mean, that woman You're is right. amazing. She did um, the day. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. She should be given an award of some sort of no, of, 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 I don't, the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't give a fuck. But that woman, 
what she has done for this country, not only the state that she's in, what this country. Um, well, she did it for Democrats. You can't say for this country because there's 74 well, you million know, people yes. who will but, disagree you know what, but with that's you. The thing. Democrats, and yes, we have some fervent Democrats as well. I mean, with either political party, you've got, you know, the yeah, extreme. the extremes. Okay. Right. Um, for most of us that are at least the Democrats that I associate with, you know, we're we're level headed to some degree. You know, we're not sociopaths, and and we're the kind of people. And I refer to all of us here. Is you know, if the Democrats fuck up, we're not going to sit there and say, no, they're wonderful. No, they fucked up. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. a fuck up is a fuck up. I don't care what my political thing is. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But so, yes, I mean, she did it for the country. Did she do it for the Democrats? No, I think the woman is a great connector. I think she is going to, in the future, there's a lot that she's, she's the one that I think is part of the, the new team and she happens to be a Democrat. I, I like how you said new team because it feels like a lot more women are going to be the new team, you know? It's like that female, that divine female energy. Like, here we go, guys. And I think that nice. she is going to be a connector. A yeah, bridge. connector. I think I she's had a vision a and I got chills. Can you imagine Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams 2024? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah, why, right? Why absolutely not. I mean, you know, I, I posted this. Hold on. You talk amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs> 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 And I got to, I post so much shit sometimes. Well, um, going back to Trump with the nuclear codes. Oh, that God. That scares the shit out of me. Wow. That's what yes. took him the out of there codes. completely. Okay, let me just crush your fears for a minute. Because when I was in the Air Force, that was actually my job in the Air Force. I had the top secret clearance. I was a command post controller for the Strategic Air Command. Wow. We were the ones in charge of, of actually pressing the red button, when you call it the red button. So for missile sites... The, you had two people that they would turn the key at the same time. We were in charge of B-52 bombers. And what we had to do, a lengthy checkpoint protocol before we would go. The president does not just press a button and then a yep. nuclear code goes off. That's not how it works. It has, to be, it has to be authorized by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Then they give a coded message, which we and my job had to decode. And then we would decode the message. And then and only then would we give it to the pilots on a bomb, they have what's called an unlock code, an unlock value. The bombs are never armed until we give them the exact sequence to unlock that bomb. So everybody's so afraid and they're talking about it. And I'm like, it's never going to happen. He's never going to press a button and a, loop, a nuclear bomb is going to go off. That's not how it works. But the media and movies and Hollywood made it, it seem that that's how it is. It's that's not so that good way. good to know. Thank you, Vicky. Well, I mean, yeah, so we never know we knew that. that. No, this guy was no. a fear monger. But let me, I just posted this. And this was said by the, I posted it by the Dalai Lama. Okay. The world will be saved by the Western woman. Oh, yes. Read it one more time, please. The world, the world, well, that was a ghetto, sorry. The world would be saved, will be saved by the Western woman. Oh. Ooh, I hope so. We'll all be glad Wait, to hear also that Nancy Pelosi made some very critical phone calls today to some people to ensure that there is no way in hell that, that Trump could launch a nuclear strike. He can. Not yeah, she did. You're right. Yeah, he, he can't. I mean, there's no way that he's not sitting there on the toilet with his Twitter account open and the button that says launch the motherfucking bomb. You know, what I mean? as much as, you know, but you know what? Keep him in charge for four more years. He would have had his bathroom equipped with that, you know, yeah. um, you know, seriously. But he would have dropped the bomb. Oh. <laughs> oh, no pun intended. Um, Somebody but, would have to redirect it to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, I have, you know, I, I mean, I hate to say this and put it out because I don't, I never wished it for it to happen. But seriously, like, I always wondered that presidents have been assassinated or, or attempted assassination. Careful what you say. You don't want the Secret Service coming over. No, no, I understand. But like I said, I'm not wishing it and I'm glad it didn't happen, but it really surprised me why it hadn't happened. You know, even, and even, and not even attempted that was executed, just someone found the plan. But, you know, someone pointed out to me at, at some point when I kind of said that, they said, you know what? 
it's because it would have to be the Democrats. And the Democrats don't do shit like that. <laughs> Mostly don't. If it would have happened, it would have been an attempt on Barack Obama. Yes. You know, so you really got to give the Secret Service a lot of credit that Absolutely. they kept him alive for eight years because with all the whack jobs in this country, Absolutely. he was the tar He would have been the target, you know? Absolutely. Yep. No, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, I don't want ever that to happen. It should have never happened at all in any of our, in our history. I mean, there's a way to deal with shit than to do that, you know? I don't know how he didn't drop dead of a heart attack from eating McDonald's every day. I mean, he's sitting up in his bed, you know, just snacking on McDonald's. I mean, that's got to be our hope, you know? Eating Big Mac Norton Adderall. How yeah, in the hell is that man still alive? He's like putting care. it on his hamburger like salt. <laughs> if he was the president in the 80s, nobody would have blinked an eye, you know? But now, I mean, it's like, seriously. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um, Vicky. Yes? Yes, yes. Why don't you tell us, because I mean, I know Durga knows, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? My, okay, well, so my background is, you know, as I, I just told you guys, I used to, I got out of the Air Force, I got out of the high school, I went right into the military, and I was in the Air Force, and I did get a very high profile job in the Air Force. I've been on Air Force One. Whoa. I've sat in President Bush's chair. I actually went on the portion of Air Force One where they actually do control if you have the detonation of the bomb and everything, but in where I used to work, that's what we used to do. And they, we, I've been in the SAC underground, which is 40 stories below, I mean, which is below ground. Where they that? have, that's in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, it's declassified, you know, so I could tell you that, you know, it doesn't, I'm not telling you anything I can't tell you, oh, but, you know, but I actually got kicked out of, is that what you want to hear again? I was kicked out of the Air Force for being gay. You know, and so like when oh, we were, yes, I was, and you. I was actually going to go to prison for five years. And so, because it was, you know, that's why actions have consequences. Well, I wasn't gay when I went into the Air Force. I actually had a boyfriend and I discovered I liked women. I never got proven gay ever, but I was supposed to go to prison for five years. I was investigated for nine months while I was in the Air Force because I was a threat to national security, right? So now, you know, now with people who vote, whether you vote Democrat or Republican, I, I'm a pretty political person. I went and got a degree in political science and everything because, you know, for that to happen to me and be such discriminated against by my own country, right? Mm -hmm. I take it very personally when gay people vote Republican because it's like, okay, that's why I almost went to prison, you know, and they're like, oh, well, I got saved some money on my taxes. So it's like, okay, if you want to just put that ahead of, you know, your right to actually be alive in this country. So, I mean, I get very passionate about politics and that's the reason why, because it affects me personally. I'm actually one of the people who was, you know, I was harmed by the politics of this country, you know, which actually stemmed from, you know, the religious right, as you guys know, you know, the whole religious right thing jumped on the bandwagon trying to make us these horrible people. You know, it's like they hijacked the Christian party. You know, so the, the, the Republican Party, I'm sorry. So it's like when you think about, you know, I don't know if you guys are Republicans at all. I don't know, you know, you ladies very well. I don't know the two of you ladies very well. I don't know your background or anything like that. But 17% of gay people voted for Trump. And I'm just appalled at that. And I think it's completely wrong, you know? And it's the same with Black people. I mean, my father marched with Martin Luther King. I got a picture of them together. My father debated Malcolm X. My father ran for uh, city councilman. Uh, it runs in my family to be politically active. And this is something I take personally. I have been pulled over by racist cops. I was sat on a curb for 40 minutes in the rain because this cop pulled me over. I was driving a Porsche. I had a Porsche. I was like 19 years old. And he was so mad and so jealous that this young black girl had a more better car than he did. He's like, oh, your VIN number plate looks like it was tampered with, which means this could be a stolen car, which gives me probable cause to search it. He <gasps> sat in the curb in the rain with no Ooh. coat for 40 minutes and turned my car inside out, desperate to find a roach or some drugs or something, couldn't find anything and grudgingly had to let me go. This kind of stuff is, I take personally. I marched with BLM this summer. And when I see the difference in how BLM protesters retreated at the Capitol and how these Yahoo white supremacist insurrectionists were basically given the keys to the kingdom. Her it infuriates me. 
And that's also why, I mean, I love Terry. I think she's awesome. I've met her more than once. But that's why I'm pissed at her. Because how could you, how could you perform for the man who started that whole thing? They would love to remove all the rights from black and gay people so that we have no rights. And people who have all the rights don't think about that. But and voter have- suppression. And that's why you guys bring up, you know, Stacey Abrams, just for what you're talking about, Durga. You know, yep. I mean, she should have been the governor. Kemp. She should have beaten Kemp, but he was the secretary of state and he stripped the black people's vote. Yep. And that's why she got so passionate about her, you know, project. You know, I donated to it several times because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, we have to have it fair, you know, and that's her, her thing. It's fair. Yeah. You know, I forgot the whole name. It's fair and something voting, you know. And so just for what Durga was talking about, I mean, that probably happened 30 years ago and it's still happening. It's still happening. It's still happening. You know, they're still just beating like, and they're like. That's okay, what I'm saying. Integrity someone, matters. Okay, I somebody just tried to say that the George, people. someone just I'm tried a, to say. I'm a whore. Whor- Durga, I'm sure, I don't know if you heard this, it just came out. But someone tried to say that say George or- Floyd was faked. Oh, what? what? Yes. I just Ooh, I, read it on Twitter that they're now trying to claim that the George Floyd death was faked. Oh, it was no. staged, just like Sandy Hook was staged and the, the Pulse nightclub was staged. Now they're saying George Floyd was staged and that black people just wanted to destroy the country. But they, that's what people do. That's what those kind of people do. Not only politicians, just I'm sure we've met people in our lives that are like that. They are in denial when they're losing power, when they're losing credibility. So what they end up doing is grasping at straws, being delusional, creating bullshit to that. The, and the thing is, it's just insane because the majority of people know that what's coming out of their fucking mouth, just like Durga said, there's lions and whatever out there. They know it's bullshit. And yet, and that's the problem. You've got not a lot of leaders. You got a lot of wolves. And that's why there does have to be got a lot of sheep. And you've got a lot of sheep. And if people are comfortable in what they're in and it doesn't affect them, they're not going to get involved. They're going to look the other way because the minute anything around them is tampered with or touched or they're, they're going to have to change, they freak out. So a lot of this shit is that people don't want to change. And these people, by fucktard, opening up Pandora's box, it's going to take fucking Biden and Kamala a lot, a lot. So people shouldn't expect tomorrow or the day after everything is going to be resolved. We got to fucking cut him some slack because this guy opened Pandora's box. It's now it's not how you go back to the way it was. It's not. No, it's not even going to change. It's it's we are divided. Correct. So it's up to. That's why it is a unity. It's for each of us to take care of each other. To maybe we're not politicians and we're not. You know, but, you know, without our own little microcosms and, and, and being on Twitter and on our own social media and saying, yes, we need a change. But the people who want to change for the positivity need to align because you cannot have unification with people that amongst themselves are divided. Yeah. But you do also have to call out people's lies and, and prove their lies to Absolutely, them. Absolutely, because, because otherwise we're just as guilty. Bad we're just as guilty as turning the other way. So he, even though he opened up the Pandora's box with the sociopaths, okay? We need to speak, the non-sociopaths need to have that voice just as loud. Because one of the first things yeah. that I think, <laughs> yeah. One of the first things I think that the Biden administration needs to do, this desperately needs to be done, is to reinstate the FCC fairness doctrine. There has to be consequences for these outrageous sites like Newsmax and Kim OA. Kim and I were just talking about right? that. Nonsense. Because it's killing people. Yes, it is. It's exactly right, Durga. That Kim and I were just talking about that today because she said, what happened? And I said, the FCC removed their regulations, like, I don't know, in the 60s or something like that. And Reagan that's, did it. And Reagan did it. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what happened. And like you said, Newsmax, OAN, even Fox News. Now you have, and Breitbart, you know, the shit they write on Breitbart, 
Yeah. Yep. You know, Trump's, I know, I'm sure you guys know, Trump's entire goal before the 2016 election, he never intended to win the presidency. Correct. Yeah. The goal was to start a far right wing TV station to compete against Fox. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Like, it was like, it's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged. Yeah, it was rigged all the way up to the second he won because he was going to take all those followers with them, open up a new, he was with Roger Ailes, who's the founder of Fox, and with, with Stephen Bannon, who was the CEO of Breitbart, and the, they were starting their own corporation. Well, then four months later, Jared Kushner confirmed that that was their plan all along. It was like an accidental preg presidency. And now, right before Donald Trump got his um, Twitter account taken away, it was literally seven minutes prior to that, he tweeted, this is just the beginning. That He said, we are just getting started. Mm -hmm. And his reference was their brand new right-wing media station, which mm -hmm. is going to keep perpetuating this bullshit. Yeah. And like what Durga said, if they don't put a stop to it, if you guys think the QAnon people are, I mean, he is yeah. worse than QAnon. Well, Val, I, I want to yeah, bring, I Val, I yeah. bring Val into this because Val is affected yes. by the thing. Please. What do you think, sweetheart? What did you call me just now? Sweetheart. <laughs> no, no, no. Sweetheart. You know, I mean, I have the Hollywood Times. We're an entertainment publication. I really, you know, I have a political writer. I let him do what he needs to do on that end. I, you know, I'm a Democrat. I, I, you know, I love Obama. I wish we had more presidents like him. And, you know, all we can do is, is hope and pray that Biden is going to come through for us and, and Kamala. And, you know, I'm just glad this motherfucker's gone. He's not <laughs> gone soon enough for any of us. But, you ladies, you Vicky and, and, and Durga, man, you know your stuff. So <laughs> thank you. I can listen to you right now. It's good. Thank you. If you need a, another political writer, I'm a great writer. <laughs> oh, cool. All right. I'll be contacting you, babe. <laughs> we'll be your team. Hey, you, know, who, you know what else? I've been trying to reach Michael Moore. I've been trying to reach out to him on thank Facebook. You. Somebody needs to do an in-depth expose documentary on QAnon. It needs to be done. Time. Past needs to be ripped off of these idiots who have been manipulating people and twisting their minds. I lost a really good friend, somebody I'd known on Facebook for like 10 years who lives in New Zealand, a fabulous artist. She went so far down that QAnon hole, it reminded me of friends I've lost to drugs. You could not you speak reality to her. Nope. She completely, she was like, JFK Jr. is going to come back and he's going to run with Trump. He, that You know that was the thing, right? Yeah, JFK that's what they said. Jr. was promoting. his running mate in, in last year. <clears throat> and, um, and then she started like getting worried and like asking me, well, you're like from Hollywood. Are you taking adrenochrome? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> First of all, you can go on Google it be right now. <laughs> Um, I mean, I only just read about adrenochrome very recently. Do, do the ladies know what that is? I'm, I okay. do not. I was going to say, adrenochrome is actually, all it is is oxidized adrenaline. You can go on Google right now and find two or three sites where you can buy it on Google right now. And I was saying to her, okay, if all this is true, and <clears throat> Trump is such a great champion of um, <clears throat> traffic children and all that kind of stuff, and they're, they're trafficking these children so that they can scare them because that makes the adrenochrome more potent and then the hollywood elite are taking this stuff to live forever and look young and all that if that's really going on why hasn't he made adrenochrome a class a schedule one drug like cocaine or heroin why can i go and buy it online right now she like, right <clears throat> couldn't answer that QAnon is the devil yeah it it's is horrible. And they found out it was run by a father and son that were Americans. They went to the Philippines. They're in the Philippines right now. They're running it. They did an entire article. I don't know if it was the LA Times or um, NY Times. I'm not sure. But they did the whole thing and they tracked it all back to this father and son who left the United States because they were wanted here for uh, a crime they had committed here. And so they went there and they're just uh, in a fat, they're fat too. I'm not that fat's bad. I'm overweight, I'm not saying anything <laughs> against fat people. But when you have the image of a fat, ugly guy in his basement, you know, in his mommy's basement, this is that guy. You know, this it's is not fat. Do you know what the probably crime was? A van, I'm telling you, they probably own a van. That's all I'm you saying. Know, the Down by the river. <laughs> the, kicker. the crime that they were accused of was hosting 
child pornography sites online. Uh, shocking. shocking. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and then they have yeah. the balls to turn around and say that Joe Biden is a pedophile and the right. pedophile cabal. They call it a cabal. Yeah. And then you go online and what Durga said, if you guys have ever encountered any of your friends that went down that, they, and they themselves call it a rabbit trail. That's what they themselves rabbit call trail. it. They're like, you need to go down the rabbit trail. You can't trust Google, you know, go to DuckDuckGo. And I'm like, what difference does it make? And I'm like, it's all made up. It's like, it's there's no pizza gate. There's no pedophile ring. They're not <laughs> Eating babies, they're not doing these things. <laughs> you guys all remember Will Pete's Ferrell. <laughs> Will Ferrell is one of their one of their focuses because he did this <laughs> stupid sketch about a clown farm. <laughs> you could go, and they were like breeding clowns, so they had these baby clowns that were in cages, <laughs> and they're like, "See, we're starting them young," and you know, and people were like saying, "This is coded. They're actually selling real children," and it's like, yep. "Are you?" Oh, I can't. It, it drives me it drives me insane drives well, it, me it is so ridiculous that it's at the point of the absurd and it's unbelievable that people buy into it yeah. right that to me, think that until you see the, I am in the whole world you know well look oh, at jim God. jones yeah. Uh, I mean, how did he get everybody like, to drink the Kool-Aid? I mean, how do you yeah. get people to kill? How about the comment Haley Bop? Remember that? Yes. And Heaven's Gate? Remember yes. Heaven's Gate? Yes. Yeah. yes. Like, how do you get people to believe in this? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, and I'm an agnostic. I don't believe in Christianity. How do you get people to believe this stuff in the Bible? I mean, people that believe in Sodom and Gomorrah, they've, they've already <laughs> proven that was a meteor strike. Scientists have proven that was a meteor strike. But, oh, it was God came down to persecute the Sodomites. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> and it's like, okay, okay, let's look at the art. So you're telling me that a duck-billed platypus made it all the way from Australia up to Mesopotamia, which is around now modern day Iraq, and got on the ark. That's that right. Yep. Tell me? That's right. <laughs> what about a planet? Come on. You know that. So Cheryl. Sure. So hi. What was but Cheryl's quiet. So Cheryl's, like, Cheryl's so entertained tonight. She's quiet. <laughs> she didn't laugh because the three of us used to be on your old podcast. It's That's like old right. times, Gay Ann. It was like me, you and Durga. That. You know, it's don't like, get me and Vicky together. Just no, don't sorry. get it. Together. It's a Nobody reunion. Talk but us. It's That's the right. old, the old and the new, the That's old and the new. You know, team. So moving, I mean, moving forward because we are moving forward. We've got a new, huh? We've got a new, um, you know, we've got a new president. Finally, finally, we have a new president, and he's considered our new president. What do you guys think? What do you think his, his first thing out of the box is going to be to tackle? What do you think is probably the most important mm -hmm. thing that they need to concentrate on? Out COVID. Of the COVID. Oh, yeah. COVID-19. Because they COVID did. And bring us some money. COVID-19 because they just found a new strain today. Another they found one? another yes. new strain of it today. Where? And I don't here. know where. Is that somebody here. In the U.S., there's a new yeah. U.S. variant. Yeah, in there the United one States, in, yes. Yeah, in Britain. There was one in Britain, and now there's one, the one. one in Africa, and now there's one in the U.S. And there'll yeah. be another one next month. Yeah. It's just going to keep mutating and mutating. I mean, I'm going to get the vaccine as soon as I can get it, but it's not going to protect against these other variations. I mean, no, I don't think... Why get it? You can't put... Because I'm a diabetic. I, I, I can't take okay. the chance at not getting... I'm a diabetic. I had heart surgery two years ago. Mm. So I'm, I got a double threat because I have an electro problem in my heart. So I'm a veteran and I've gone to the VA. I'm already on their list. So I'm banking on getting it hopefully April or May for uh -huh. myself. But the thing is, these these variants or these mutations, are they as um, strong or, you know, as the first one or as they're mutating... Or is it getting sort of less and less? Well, it's not. It's not so much that they're stronger. They uh, they get you get infected faster. Ah, right. the problem. more more and contagious. It spreads, it spreads yeah. faster. Oh, did you it's guys hear about contagious. that teenage girl? She got it and died two days later. Yeah, you know. Hey, there was a friend of mine that called me the other night, and she's very much you know COVID you know compliant, and she called me. She goes, "When you get," I was at a friend's house. She goes, "When you get home, call me. I have a bedtime story." I said, okay, it was Joe. It was Joe, Cara. Oh, lovely. And, you lovely. know Joe, Val. And Joe told me that that a, a coworker of hers 
and he is ex-military. He is just like so COVID, com again, ultra COVID compliant. And his mother lives with him. And he has, he was, he has COVID. Well, oh. mother gave it to him. She literally never goes out, went to the supermarket, uh -huh. took the little wipey thing, cleaned the supermarket handle cart, did her shopping, hand sanitized, got home, incubation. She got COVID. She died. Hmm. But she, hold on, did she really die? She died. She didn't really die. She died, but then they revived her. They called 911 or EMTs or whatever because she flatlined. They came there and they wouldn't take, they couldn't take her to the hospital. Yeah. This is in LA? This is in yeah. LA. Because the hospitals are full. Exactly. So, you know, they're doing whatever they need to do at the house and they did revive her. But he told my friend, that he's been through Afghanistan, Desert Storm, wherever the hell he's been and seen the worst. And he's been, I guess he's been shot at or he's, whatever. He said his body, this is like this evil, this evilness inside your body. Okay. It feels like every organ is burning as if it's just combusting, like that spontaneous combustion. Ooh. It's so painful. Yeah. And, you know, people, again, who don't take this seriously, seriously and think these kids that are still doing these house parties and, and not doing their part, you know, you're 20, as you said, Vicki, people, young people are dying now. I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. not the old person, the old person and the person that's, um, has, uh, um, Pre-existing conditions, Morb morbid obesity, or yeah, whatever it is. I mean, it is affecting, and and as you said, and someone, one of the one of the people watching the show, Patricia Jarvis, just said it's more contagious, and you know, this is nothing that's going to go away with a virus. I mean, with a vaccine, it's what I read that as more mutations come up, you know, we're chasing. You know, one thing we're going to always be chasing this disease, just like flu. Yep. And that's exactly well, what it is. And probably like from here on in, not only will we have the flu vaccine, the pneumonia vaccine, we'll now have this vaccine. But hopefully we'll have a heightened immune defense against it after we get the vaccine. Yeah. Just like all the other flus. A friend of mine just had it. He was sick for a couple of days, very high temperature. He then felt better. The temperature was gone and he was fine after five days. It was nasty, but it was gone. But it depends it on the, the person. Day. You know, I just, it depends on the person. Every, every person is different. Yeah. I mean, I know Delana had it. Delana, Who? Delana. Oh, she just put out a, a, a post uh, a couple of days ago. It was a, like a 30 minute live video talking about, she hadn't really talked about it, but she was deathly ill. She isolated completely by herself, knowing, you know, how tough she is. Mm -hmm. She sent her daughter off to be with George, with her dad. And she, you know, couldn't eat anything. She, you know, the minute she tried to eat something, 10 minutes later, it would come right back up. She Ooh. was feverish, in so much pain, couldn't breathe. And she realized in hindsight, there were two times she probably should have gone to the hospital. But being stubborn Delana, she didn't. Now her lungs are fucked up. She yeah. can still barely breathe. She's not contagious anymore, but she's, you know, she could have died. Yeah. And she's one of the healthiest people I know. She's vegan. Yeah. She teaches fitness now. She's teaching fitness classes. She works out like five days a week. And it knocked her out like a sledgehammer. I mean, look, the reality is in my line of what I do, I mean, I get tested all the time. I mean, just I mean, I like starting last Monday, a week ago, I was tested Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, last Monday, this week, last Monday, Wednesday. Thursday, I'm going to be tested tomorrow and I'm going to be tested Monday. And I've always been negative. And then I, I just had some blood taken. I've got to deal with my cholesterol, but I'll deal with that shit later. But they <laughs> took the antibody test and because I wanted to know now, and it's, and it's like, I know I didn't have it because I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have symptoms, but I wanted to make sure I didn't have it. And I just wanted to, I wasn't one of those asymptomatic people walking around being, you know, 
what is it called? Typhoid Mary, you know, COVID. Right, right. Mary, you know what I mean? I'll be right. So I just wanted to make sure I was okay. And, you know, and, and it's like, everyone's like, God, you've had more COVID tests a lot. I said, yeah, I mean, part of it I'm okay with. I, I would prefer, and I'm not paying for it. I mean, production. Back, paid, positive or negative? Always negative. Always yeah. negative. No, did they say that you ever had it? Never. Okay. Never. Um, which I was kind of happy, but sort of disappointed. But in any event, um, you know, I was like, damn. Um, but I'm glad I didn't. But the point is, is like, you know, where they go, but you get tested so many times. I said, you know what? You act like it's an inconvenience. To me, it's a blessing. A, I don't have to pay for it. It's, it's covered. So I'm very fortunate. Number two, I know for me that I have peace of mind right. peace that of when mind. I come home and I walk in the door with my 88 year old mother here who is right. compromised beyond, I'm not going to kill her. Cause guess right. what? If I get it, I will kill her. Right. And when I go outside with my mask, I know that, you know, I'm safe, but I'm protecting myself. And I said to my friends as a joke, if any of you bitches, and I don't have a lot, I don't have a lot of people in my bubble, but any of you bitches get COVID, I can tell you one fucking minute, it ain't me. It's not going to be me giving it to you. Right. And you're going to have some fucking hell to pay to explain to me. Now, God forbid I get it. Where yeah. the fuck did you get it, bitch? You know? Right. When you were saying you're in the bubble and you're not doing shit, you know, but I mean, the reality is it, it is, it's, 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 it's scary out there, but, and I think people, a lot of people are scared. A lot of people don't give a fuck. A lot you know, of people don't think, give a fuck. Because they think that it's not, it's not going to happen to them. This riot we just had, it's going to probably be a super spreader event. Another surge. Of course it's going to be a surge. Absolutely. It's be a surge. Every time a group fucking collects, I mean, I work on the Grammys, okay? We were going to have the Grammys at the end of January. Yeah, so. Okay. I was going to do a shoot today with the host, Trevor, Trevor Noah. And for other reasons, the shoot was just, it was hard for me to put the shoot together under COVID. It was, it was, it was interesting, but the shoot got canceled because the Grammys move because LA is such a freaking hotbed yeah, well, it's, that yeah. we moved it to March and it may move again, depending. So the point is CBS, which is my network is responsible enough not to go with the ratings, not to give a shit, but to really sit there and go, you know what? It's about being, having people understand that even we who will lose at this point, some advertising dollars, maybe in this quarter, billions, yeah. that it's not worth it. No, it's not. And people just think, oh, you know, oh, okay. So I'm gonna tell you my Kim's family, her brother's Republican, right? So they had her dad's 80th birthday. I have not been out or to her family's house since COVID has happened, right? But her brother, his wife, their kids, they don't believe it. And like you guys were saying, they only think old people get it. And even the son's like, oh, only old fogies get it. And I'm like, no, that's not true. And they're and they're dying off. Well, anyway, I agreed we were gonna have a luncheon outside in the backyard for her dad's 80th birthday, right? Outside, everybody social distance. I came for the first time, I had my mask on. The lady, her sister-in-law laughed in my face. She laughed. She said, why are you wearing a mask? I said, why am I wearing a I said, there's COVID. And she goes, it's not going to protect you. You need an N95 mask. I said, any mask, because I had an actual, um, one of those surgical masks on. I said, this mask is doing a good job. I said, and if you would have a mask on, both of our masks would be protecting each other. And then I stood my distance from her, but she literally started laughing in my face. And of course she is a Trump Republican. That is just their mentality. They're like, oh, we're not going to wear a mask. You know, they never wore a mask. They had parties. I found out that they had parties at their house. They had all their guests over for Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I couldn't even believe that that was their actual mentality. And then the, to balls to laugh. And they only, they think the whole 360,000 people who died were all elderly people. I'm like, that is not true. There's, I personally know six people who have died of it. And I know like probably 25 people who have gotten it. And like Durga was saying, every last one of them has different symptoms. And like we were talking about Delana and her symptoms, all the people had different symptoms that they had. 
whether they had a, ha a heart tachycardia now, one guy had to have his hand amputated, another person now has blood clots, my friend Meredith's mom now has to have an oxygen tank, my other friend Kathy, her brother has to walk with a walker. These are long-term effects that are happening. Oh, it's not just, oh, I got COVID and died. Mm -hmm. you, you know what? You might be lucky if you died because yeah. the side effects right. are actually worse. Yes, exactly. And the brain damage that's, that's been happening. And and people are, I mean, Mark Mothersbaugh is a friend of mine, the guy from Devo. He was so out of it when he was in the hospital. He thought he was in the hospital because he had been jumped downtown. His brain made up this whole story that these young punks had jumped him in the parking garage and stolen his laptop. And he, he was- he, he thought this in his head? Wow. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was he, taking- He was delusional? Yeah, that's, what? Uh, that's he, he became delusional, Durga, is that what you're saying? Totally delusional. He was completely yeah. delirious and delusional. And like his wife would call him on the phone when he was in the hospital before they intubated him. And, and he was like, well, honey, do they have any leads? And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's, he's like, of the guys who jumped me. And she's like, no, mm -hmm. honey, just let them take care of you. Mm -hmm. And later when he came out of it, he realized uh, what he had, in his, what his brain had made up. And I think he was thinking about doing a whole album called Hit in the Head with a Brick or something. <laughs> but that's what he thought had happened. And he made up all, he wow. like wrote a whole album in his head about sure, what gonna say something? was in the yeah. hospital. Now, I was just going to say hallucinations are definitely part of the COVID. And I have a friend whose nephew's 22 years old, healthy, came down with COVID. I mean, fortunately, he recovered. He's back home now. But like you guys said, I mean, 22 years old, fit, healthy, probably got it from a coworker because he had to work. You know, a lot of people have to work. Uh, fortunately, a lot of people are employed, I mean, with all that we're going through. So where, what do they do? You know, what, there's a lot of questions right now. Cara, I know you had a, like a different topic to throw in and I want to give you, you know, we've got, you know, a few minutes um, mm -hmm. to throw this out, not to leave it at this note. What, what was the topic that you wanted to bring up? I just, well, you know, we've all discussed how, how much, how the terrible things we've gone through in the past year and all the awful things that are happening around the world but I also have talked to friends and we all agree that there have been some fabulous things have come out of this weird time when we're stuck at home for instance my sister loves it she cooks <laughs> you know she just does she still goes visits friends she does the zoom thing she just she's just taken to it this this kind of twilight world that we're in so I don't know I was just going to say what what girls you know, what one thing would you say that is a really great thing that you discovered about yourself or brought into your life last year? I read 13 books. There. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Okay. I read the Michael Cohen book. I read the Mary Trump book. I, I read the um, Bob Woodward book. I read a book by... Um, I've read like three anti-Christian books. <laughs> I read, I did. It's How Jesus spiritual journey then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I've been I've been drinking every day, and I just found out my liver is fine. So that's a good thing. I, was Cheryl, I do have COVID twenty right here. Morning, right, you, you have the COVID twenty value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did literally gain ten pounds for real. I did. I, I'm, I, you know, I refuse, I'm not going to say what I did because I get heat for it. So huh? I lost 32 pounds and people are great. like that. That's fabulous. <laughs> well, Again, I haven't seen you in a long time. You look fabulous. Thank you. you. Do. Thank yeah. you very much. How did you do it? How did I do it? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I started eating because what used to happen eating properly because you know in, in my field you know you're on the you know you're on sets and it's crap shoot it's crap food i mean craft service and you know when i tend to need to do my stuff it's like lunch and i don't take the lunch so i'm grazing the craft service and i'm in my office and i'm on deadlines and the, the commissary closed and i realize it's four o'clock and i haven't eaten and i go to my boss's you know, candy dish. And I start to like inhale all the Snickers and all that crap. And, or I get home at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock from, and I just like look at anything and just shove it in my mouth. So, you know, what I started doing is I started eating properly, you know, and I realized that, you know, you know, I was, that I was eating out of stress or I was eating yeah. out of this or, and even though I was stressed and a little bit, we all were, got a little bit depressed and shell shocked when it happened, you know, I realized to learn 
I will eat when my body tells me it's hungry. And and I didn't do a diet. I hate that word because I, I anytime someone wants to put rules on me, unless I'm going to like, unless I have to follow them because otherwise the alternative is going to jail. I usually don't like to follow rules. So I, um, I started sort of going, okay, well, you know, if I want those McDonald's French fries or I want that ice cream, I will not deny myself that. I just won't eat the whole fucking pint. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which I used to do before. Or, oh my God, I'm so freaking hungry. The first thing I grab is a bag of potato chips, the big Lay's family pack. And, you know, in an hour, like less than an hour, not less than an hour, but whatever time it is, I'm watching TV, trying to one day run down, like wind down from work. And I've already, I've, I've just snacked on the whole thing. And it, it would have, should have been a personal, like the way I would have like mowed through a personalized bag. Of That's how I got with M&M's, the Christmas pack <laughs> of M&M's. Oh, I went through those. I went through M&M's. M&M's. I had my M&M's it's like a milk gallon. It was horrible. So, you know, so I, I realized, you know, I, I guess for me, what the good thing came out of it um, is, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I, I guess was, I started to take care of my body, I guess, and be aware of things, um, and become healthy. I mean, there's a lot of, I still have a lot of vices, but, you know, healthier or be awareness of what I'm putting in my body. Like I said, I went, you know, I didn't fast. I didn't realize you had to fast before you take your blood test for the cholesterol. Okay. Yeah, you do. I did. Uh -huh. So, and then I'm on this kick right now. And this is where it, the good, it's not so good. Um, where I'm like, oh my God, every night I have like a glass of milk and chocolate chip cookies. Uh -huh. Well, of course you're having dairy every freaking night. You're not fasting. Of course your cholesterol is going to be not so good. So <laughs> I, have, I have to go see the doctor on Monday. And I'm going to say, I'll tell you why. I kind of know why my cholesterol is shit. So can we repeat it in like a couple of months or three yeah. months so we can figure out really what it is? It might be good because no, because you just lost all that weight. I'm sure your cholesterol is going to go down. Well, I mean, it had been down. Like I had a blood test like, but I, in the beginning and it was fine. It just spiked up and it's like, I'm very aware because my mother has, I was on dialysis and they do the blood work every week. So I know she doesn't have to tell me she cheated. She went in the refrigerator and got cheese and shit because when the blood results come up and all her numbers, I'm like, and then I, and then when I see that, then I go searching for the Munster cheese or the Parmesan or or think of chocolate ice cream. And I'm like, cause I, you know, it's like, if it's there, I'll eat it. If it's not, You're I don't- Why in that shit at your house? I do because I still need to know that that shit's in my house, whether I eat it or not. I need to have that safety fit in my house. But you know, I'm like, God, I should have brought, I bought a fucking refrigerator that has a computer in it. The Samsung one with the yeah. computer and I can hear Pandora and it's, I'm thinking oh the only shit that doesn't have is a fucking lock. I mean, I, I need a lock. You program your refrigerator computer to say, shut the fucking door. <laughs> she's deaf. She doesn't wear a friggin' hearing aid. I could be sitting there screaming at her. If she doesn't look at me, it's like she doesn't hear shit. <laughs> I've been raised with an electric shock. So when she touches it, it blows her across the room. Okay, no, that's what I need. <laughs> I mean, um, so, so, I mean, so that, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, I, I'll go through this. Cheryl, what have, what have you, what's your, what's your thing? I was thing? just going to say, I was going to say, maybe it's all that holiday eating, Gayan. Maybe it's all the holiday stuff too. Maybe. So easy, easy on yourself about that. Okay. But for me, I have slowed down. Like I was so busy. I was, I mean, I loved, I loved my life. I love traveling and moving, but these last few months have really, taught me to meditate more, slow down, simplify, and I'm loving it. I love all the extra time I have or making more use of the time I have. So yeah, I've been loving it. And Durga? I've gone up and down. I've had phases like the beginning of the lockdown, I just like did nothing and it was glorious. And like last year I'd been saying, God, what would it take? I'm fucking burnt out on touring and going on the road. What would it take for me to have just like three months where I did nothing? So you can blame all this on me. I got really, I gained a bunch of weight and then I lost 15 pounds and now I've gained some of that back. So I've been in and out of health and really looking for my sustainable path to wellness in terms of my body and juggling that with wanting to stress eat and drink and stuff like that. But the best thing that happened out of this is because we had a lockdown situation, my sister was on tour in uh, Europe with the Australian Pink Floyd and the guy who's the lead guitarist is like her best friend. And they the tour got canceled, they got sent back to the UK 
she got stuck in London for six months at his house. Wow. And he wow. is an amazing uh, musician engine and engineer and producer. So he helped us finish Black Floyd, our album, the McGroom Sisters album. Oh. And it came out way better than it would have if this oh. hadn't happened. Oh, no. That's, That's awesome. awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, right. I'm really happy about how it came out. All right, we're going to wind down, but I'm going to ask one question and then I'll I'll end the show. Um, the question is, moving forward, each of you, what is your goal? What is one of your things that you want to accomplish in 2021? Uh, let's start with Val. Um, just peace of mind, I think, you know, trying to just be calm through through all that we, we've been through and the meditation is the way Cheryl I, I I we just have to just peace on earth you know yep. peace in our head peace in our body thank you Vicki I want to finish my book seven o'clock story I don't know if you know on Facebook every, every night I was doing a seven o'clock story every night about all these crazy experiences I had in my my life and everything so I want to finish that book and also do a podcast on it ah great knows. wonderful and Cara well I I'm also I can't say finish a book because I haven't started a book <laughs> but I've I've got loads of bits of paper everywhere I've got a place I want to start I bought Scrivener I've got to learn it I'm like really at the beginning of the book but I hope that this year I will get plunged in and then start a routine. Because this has been a year of routines, I guess, for all of us, right? Routines, yoga, the eating, you know, the we're things we're talking about, the meditation. So I want to bring that into my Drinking. Routine. Drinking, yeah, exactly. That's what that's saying. Cheryl? Yeah, I'm going to just spend this coming year just being more aware and more present in this moment. And maybe being more aware of other people you know, having their moments and really kind of connecting in a deeper level with people, you know, whether we do it still through Zoom for a while longer or in person, hopefully soon, but it's really about, gosh, we all, we all are going to come through this and have these amazing stories. So just opening up and to hear that and really make that heart connection with people. And what about you, Gayanne? I dare go next. Uh, I want to get back to Italy and finally really get into my, my ideal body. I want to do that this year. Okay. And for me, I've worked on the outside. I've always wanted to be this. And I finally attained this. Now I have to work on the inside. And there's a lot of work that I need to do on myself. And, um, and there's someone that came into my life. And there is no mistakes for people coming into each other's lives. Um, it's not a romantic thing. Um, it's a friend. And um, we are mirrors of each other. Her more mirror. It, it's a mirror. And it's um, having me deal with things that I've sort of not really dealt with because it's all about me putting on a persona to prote uh, protection, to help to defense mechanisms. And it's sort of like, you know what? I just think maybe at 57, I just need to be me. I don't want to be. I mean, I, I don't want to be what other people expect me to be. So I guess this year I'm going to work on being my true, authentic self. And if people don't like me, then instead of me worrying about it and adapting to say, wow. fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. I'll, <laughs> find, I'll find my own tribe. So on that I know. Tribe. Good I know one. I know we, we've got a tribe. I mean, I, I'm, you know, to some degree, I do create a tribe and I don't, and I always, well, like I said, it's always not about taking for granted sometimes the people in my tribe um, and then trying to, I don't know. It's kind of like you, everybody, I don't know everybody, but me, I, I grew up where I always wanted to be liked and, um, and accepted, you know? And, I think all of us did. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, I came to a period in my life, in my youth, you know, the rebel rebellious years, and I didn't give a shit. Right. And then I got older, and now I give a shit again. And I want to get back to where I was. And I and life changes you. So I just need to be, I just need to work on myself. That's all. I think everybody, we always said things and what we want to do. I think it's working on yourself. And it's true. You can't get validation from anybody unless you get it from yourself first. That's yeah. true. Acceptance. So I have to accept 
that I'm a lunatic sometimes, that I'm a little eccentric, sometimes high maintenance. Um, but you know what? It's never done maliciously. It's always out of love. It's always from a heart space. And some people can accept that and some people can't. And maybe the people that can't are not people I should want to try and either convince to accept me as I am or me to try and change them to show them that this is the way to be. Acceptance, acceptance of myself and acceptance of others. I guess that's my goal. That's good. That's a good except, goal. Except yeah. for the Republicans. Other than those sociopaths, <laughs> I don't give a flying fuck. I'm talking about people. So yeah. in any event, yeah. thank, you, thank you, Vicky, 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 for joining us. Thank you, Durga. Um, hey, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Cara. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Val Milano. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone who is watching. Thank. I know. See, you know, it's funny because I think we're going to get a shit ton of calls. And then no one called. And then I always ask after why no one calls. And they're like, because they don't want to interrupt the flow. Or we're so goddamn fucking fascinating and so beautiful that we're so that they just can't put shit together. They're the words. So I just want to thank you, whether you're here calling in or not. Um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you telling everybody about the show. You know, we do it. We enjoy it. Um, this is my girlfriends. You know, we just hang. And if you know, we you know, I, the reason why I like the Collins is. I like to learn and listen to you guys. Um, you know, that we're not lecturing. You know, we, we, we're, we're, I just like to hear other opinions. So please do call in more often because I, I welcome that. Um, and now that I have my old lady things here, you know what I mean? I just love this shit. This is funny. I can't wait to wear it tomorrow outside um, and see how many people look. But, um, but I just want to say thank you all. Um, remember, it's Between the Sheets podcast, the first and third Friday of every month here at the United Broadcasting Network on Facebook. Um, we have a, we're on, I'm on Twitter, which I don't use cause I hate Twitter. I just stalk people on Twitter, like Trump, just to see what he was doing. Um, Facebook page between the sheets podcast, follow me on Instagram, QTE brat. Um, I'm everywhere and all places, um, uh, reach out to me. Um, what car? I know where baby. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this month. You know, we're not on the, we're not on next week because that would be the third Friday. We're on the following Friday, but then starting in, again, starting in February, <clears throat> we will be the first and third Friday of every month. I'm trying to lock in some really interesting guests. I can tell you right now, Margot Martindale, um, if no one knows who she is, uh, she's a com comedic actress. <clears throat> I think she's a, 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 an award winner, if I'm not mistaken. She was on. Oh, yeah. I recognized her immediately. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, she has said, yes, she'd do anything for me. And, but the thing is, she's on the East Coast and seven o'clock is a little seven to like, you know, seven is 10 o'clock. And from 10 to 1130 is a little too late for her. So she will be doing the show when she comes to LA. Um, and so, like I said, I'm trying to bring some people and, you know, I, I just hate doing those celebrity interviews. That's why I kind of like to invite my friends on because they're cool. Oh, yeah. um, but anyway, <clears throat> Vicky, where can people find you? Right now, just on Facebook right now, of course, just Vicki Wagner. You can just look me up as we were talking earlier. I've got to redo some of my websites. That's been a work in progress, but please find me on Facebook. Send me a friend request because I'm building up my, build up my list. And then I'm going to give everybody the instructions on how they can get my book. Perfect. Um, Valerie? Valerie Milano um, at uh, dot H times at Gmail. But my website is the Hollywood Times dot Hello, Valerie, wake up. Um, my <laughs> website's uh, the Hollywood Times dot today. Dot today. It's windy outside all of a sudden. Is I don't it? know if you hear that, but it's crazy out there. So um, yeah, the Hollywood yeah. Times dot today. Thank you, Gay Ann, for having me. Oh, thank you. And Cheryl? Uh, my website is mediumcheryl.com. You can reach me there and also Facebook with at Medium Cheryl. Thank you, Cara. Uh, you can find me in the local thrift store. Nice. With a mask, right? Without the mask. With a mask, yeah. With a mask, yeah. Um, Durga. Uh, I'm on, I have a, a Durga McBroom fan page on Facebook, a Durga McBroom personal page, um, a Pamela McBroom page, which is where I go when I'm on 30 Day Ban. Uh, I have Durga Diva on Instagram and at uh, Mrs. Durga McBroom on Twitter. Well, thank you all. I really thoroughly, I guess we never deal with politics. I actually try and avoid it. Last time we talked politics, Val Milano is chatting me going, maybe we should stay away from politics. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, I thought, you know, look, I think just because of what happened 
I think we have to bring, I, I think it's part of podcasting is news media in a way, you know? So I just want to bring just our side to the table, you know, and I, and I, it is free speech. And, um, and, you know, I'm glad no one called in that was crazy because I didn't want to really deal with that tonight. But um, I just thank each and every one of you out there watching. I thank each and every one of you participating in the show. Um, you know, politics is always a, a time bomb, but I think this time because the ex-president is a big time bomb. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, exactly. Bye-bye. Don't let the door hit you in the ass, motherfucker. Right. So, um, you know, blue is where it is. If red goes, you know, if red can get their head out of their ass and really see what the big picture is instead of hate and discrimination, um, you know, maybe like the, maybe the both sides will be able to work together towards something called democracy. Maybe. And that's and that is what we have to strive for. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you ladies for joining. It was, I love you guys, each and every one of you. You you make me better. You make the show better when you're on. So thank you, because it would pretty be boring me talking to myself, pretty boring. <laughs> so I just want to thank you. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, thank you. Who's on the keyboards tonight in the studio? It is Christian. Thank you, Christian, for everything. Happy New Year, everybody, 2020. Let's just put our, you know, let's just kumbaya it. You know what I mean? Kumbaya it. So yeah. Yeah, it's kumbaya it and let's move forward with positivity. Thank you. And then always, namaste. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you.